create a lecture discussing the topic of brain-computer interfaces. All right, let's dive deep into the fascinating world of brain-computer interfaces, commonly known as BCIs. These interfaces serve as direct communication pathways between the brain and external devices. It's a topic that sits at the intersection of neuroscience, engineering, and computer science. Think of it as a way for your mind to directly control computers, prosthetics, or even entire networks. Sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? But it's becoming more of a reality every day. Let's start with the history. BCIs have been in development since the 1970s, but it wasn't until the early 2000s that they started getting serious attention. The DARPA Brain Machine Interface Program was one of the major catalysts in this field. They pumped in money and resources, aiming to develop technology that could help soldiers and amputees. Now, how do BCIs actually work? Well, first, you need to understand that your brain communicates through electrical signals. These signals can be detected using various methods. The most common method is EEG, or electroencephalography, which measures brain activity through electrodes placed on the scalp. There are also more invasive methods like ECOG and neural implants that provide higher resolution data but require surgical intervention. Once we capture these signals, they're then processed and translated into commands that can control external devices. Algorithms and machine learning models play a big role in making sense of this complex neural data. They identify patterns and associate them with specific tasks like moving a cursor on a screen or manipulating a robotic arm the applications are incredibly varied. On one end, we have medical uses like helping people with paralysis regain some level of mobility, you know. Imagine someone who can't move their limbs being able to control a wheelchair just by thinking about it. On the other end, there are consumer applications like video games where you control the gameplay using your thoughts. But it's not all smooth sailing. There are ethical considerations. Who owns the data generated by your brain? Could it be misused? Could hackers literally hack into your thoughts? These are real questions that are being debated as we speak. And let's not forget the current research trends. Elon Musk's company, Neuralink, is working on developing a high bandwidth implantable brain machine interface. The idea is to eventually allow for a symbiotic relationship between humans and AI, paving the way for a future where humans could, theoretically, download knowledge directly into their brains. Oh, and, and get this, scientists are even exploring the potential of brain-to-brain -brain communication. That's right, the possibility of telepathy isn't entirely out of the realm of science. So there you have it. BCIs are a captivating blend of science and imagination, limited only by our current technological constraints and ethical boundaries. As we continue to unlock the mysteries of the human brain, who knows what incredible feats we'll achieve next. One of the most mind-blowing developments in BCIs has been in the area of sensory substitution and augmentation. Imagine not just controlling devices with your thoughts, but actually receiving sensory input directly into your brain. For instance, there are BCIs that can transmit visual information to the brain, bypassing the eyes entirely. This has enormous potential for restoring sight to the visually impaired. We're not quite at matrix level yet where you can download skills, but we're definitely heading in that direction. Then there's the topic of neural dust, tiny wireless sensors that can be scattered across the brain to provide more detailed real-time neural data. These would be less invasive than current methods and could open the door to more sophisticated forms of brain mapping and interaction. One project you might find particularly fascinating is BrainNet. Researchers are experimenting with connecting multiple brains together to solve problems collaboratively. Imagine a world where we could link minds to tackle complex issues like climate change or even explore virtual worlds collectively. It's a tantalizing thought, straight out of a sci-fi novel. Speaking of science fiction, let's talk about memory enhancement. Companies are researching how to improve human memory by creating a sort of backup for our brains. The idea is to record your experiences and knowledge so you can reload them whenever you need. Imagine never forgetting an anniversary or losing precious memories as you age. It's a concept that feels so futuristic, yet it's closer than we think. 
Now, as exciting as all this is, we can't ignore the darker side of BCIs. The ethical and security concerns are very real. The term neurosecurity is gaining traction to address the risks of unauthorized brain access. With BCIs becoming more advanced, so are the methods to potentially hack them. So the future may require us to have firewalls for our brains to keep our thoughts and memories safe. Then there's the digital divide. As BCIs become more sophisticated and expensive, there's a risk that only the wealthy could afford these enhancements, creating a divide between the cognitively enhanced and the rest of society. We're entering territory that's as much about philosophy and ethics as it is about science and technology. So BCIs stand at the forefront of an incredible array of possibilities and challenges. It's a field that could redefine what it means to be human in ways we can barely imagine today. Another extraordinary development in the field of BCIs is neuroprosthetics, a subset of BCIs aimed at replacing or enhancing lost bodily functions. In the most futuristic scenarios, we're looking at the possibility of a full brain transplant into a machine. Yes, it sounds like a plotline from a sci-fi movie, but some theorists believe that we could eventually upload our consciousness into a machine, potentially achieving a form of immortality. Then there's the realm of emotional computing. Researchers are developing algorithms capable of detecting a user's emotional state from their brain signals. Imagine a future where your computer knows you're frustrated and adjusts its interface to help you out, or perhaps plays your favorite soothing music without you having to lift a finger. Let's not overlook the convergence of BCIs with other emerging technologies. For instance, combining BCIs with virtual reality can lead to deeply immersive experiences you'd be able to navigate a virtual world just by thinking about it. There are also explorations into combining BCIs with quantum computing to exponentially increase processing power and make real-time complex brain simulations a reality. Now, what's really interesting is the field of shared cognition. Imagine a surgical team connected through BCIs, sharing cognitive load and making real-time collaborative decisions during a complex operation. The same concept could be extended to pilots, engineers, and scientists working on intricate tasks. We're talking about a level of teamwork and shared knowledge that is unprecedented. And guess what? Animals aren't being left out either. BCIs have been successfully implemented in rats, monkeys, and even cockroaches. These studies provide invaluable insights into how BCIs could work in humans, and they pave the way for interspecies communication. Imagine a future where you could potentially talk to your pet via a brain-to-brain -brain interface. But we should also consider the potential societal impacts of BCIs. While these technologies offer transformative benefits, they could also lead to unforeseen consequences. Think about job displacement. If a machine connected to a BCI can perform a task better than a human, what happens to the workforce? And how do we regulate or control technology that can literally read and influence our thoughts? It's an exciting time to be delving into the world of brain computer interfaces. The potential is staggering and every year brings new advancements that push the boundaries of what we thought was possible. So have you ever thought about the concept of neural real estate as BCIs become more prevalent? there's a question of how much space in the brain can be allocated for these interfaces. The brain is already a very busy place, constantly processing a myriad of tasks. So how do we integrate BCIs without causing cognitive overload or even neural fatigue? Researchers are looking at this very question, exploring how to design BCIs that work harmoniously with our natural neural processes. And speaking of harmony, let's delve into the concept of brain music. Researchers have successfully transformed brainwaves into musical notes. Imagine creating a unique soundtrack of your mental state as you go about your day. This has therapeutic implications as well. Music therapy combined with BCIs could offer new ways to treat mental health disorders like depression or anxiety. Now let's talk about BCIs and language. There's ongoing research aimed at facilitating direct brain-to-brain -brain language communication bypassing the need for speech or written text. Imagine a future where learning a new language is as simple as downloading a software patch to your neural interface. Language barriers could become a thing of the past. Artificial telepathy is another area gaining attention. 
While we're not quite there yet, the idea that we could eventually communicate complex ideas and emotions just by thinking about them is tantalizing. Imagine the depth of connection that could be possible between people if we could share our thoughts directly. Let's also consider the potential for brain training using BCIs. We're not talking about simple puzzles or memory games here. Imagine a BCI system designed to optimize your cognitive abilities, essentially making you smarter, more focused, and quicker at problem solving. The possibilities are incredible, although they do raise questions about the ethics of cognitive enhancement. Speaking of ethics, the question of neural rights is becoming increasingly important. As BCIs become more common and more powerful, the need for a framework that safeguards individual neural data and mental privacy becomes critical. This would be an extension of existing privacy laws, but specialized to protect the unique vulnerabilities associated with direct brain access. BCIs are a testament to the unbounded ingenuity of human imagination and our relentless pursuit to transcend biological limitations. From medical marvels to societal transformations, the impact of BCIs could be revolutionary. You might be fascinated to know that BCIs are starting to merge with other groundbreaking technologies like CRISPR gene editing and optogenetics. With CRISPR, scientists could potentially modify genes to make neurons more receptive to BCI interfaces, improving signal quality and control. Optogenetics would allow for the control of individual neurons using light, offering unparalleled precision in brain manipulation. Now let's shift our focus to something equally intriguing, the military applications of BCIs. These applications extend from the straightforward, like piloting drones with the mind, to the complex, such as neuro-optimization, where soldiers' cognitive and physical abilities are enhanced for better performance in high-stress situations. There are even projects exploring the use of BCIs for cybersecurity, allowing for more intuitive and quicker responses to threats. But not all military uses are combat related. BCIs can offer unique solutions for PTSD treatment, enabling neural pathways to be rewired to mitigate the symptoms. Your reactions could directly influence the storyline, making for an incredibly immersive experience. The role of BCIs in education is also an interesting topic. Imagine a classroom where a teacher could immediately gauge the understanding and engagement level of each student through a BCI tailored real-time educational experiences could become the norm, revolutionizing the way we approach learning. And let's not forget the potential of BCIs in the realm of social interactions. We're talking about empathetic computing, where a BCI could sense your mood and adapt your social media feeds accordingly. Feeling down? Your interface might suggest uplifting content or even alert your loved ones. As you can see, BCIs have the potential to touch virtually every aspect of human life, offering both unprecedented opportunities and complex ethical dilemmas. From enhancing our capabilities to fundamentally altering how we interact with the world and each other, BCIs are a frontier of endless possibilities. One area we haven't touched upon yet is the impact of BCIs on sports and athletics. Imagine athletes using BCIs to fine tune their focus, reaction time, and even muscle coordination. We could be looking at a future where the term performance enhancing takes on a whole new dimension. This of course would raise ethical questions about what constitutes a fair competition. Now consider the integration of BCIs with smart homes. We're moving beyond simple voice commands or mobile apps. Imagine walking into your home and it immediately adjusts the lighting, temperature, and even the aroma based on your current mood or mental state. Your home could become an extension of you, adapting in real time to provide the most comfortable and beneficial environment. Then there's the avenue of personalized healthcare. We've already discussed the potential medical applications, but what about ongoing real-time health monitoring? BCIs could detect early signs of neurological conditions like Alzheimer's or even monitor mental well-being, alerting medical professionals and family members if something seems amiss. The proactive healthcare possibilities are tantalizing. A particularly futuristic concept is the idea of thought identification, where BCIs could identify specific thoughts or memories. While this could have revolutionary therapeutic applications, 
it opens up a Pandora's box of ethical and privacy concerns. Who owns your thoughts? Can they be used against you legally? These are questions society will have to grapple with. And speaking of legality, consider the implications for the justice system. Some have proposed using BCIs for more accurate lie detection, or even as a means of delivering more personalized rehabilitation programs for offenders. While promising, these applications come with their own set of ethical considerations, especially concerning coercion and consent. Believe it or not, BCIs are also starting to make their way into the art world. Artists are experimenting with creating visual and auditory art directly from their brainwaves. This is more than just a new medium. It's a way of sharing a deeply personal cognitive experience with an audience, breaking new ground in artistic expression. Finally, let's touch on the economic implications. As BCIs become more mainstream, new markets and industries will emerge. We're not just talking about the manufacturers of the interfaces themselves, but an entire ecosystem of apps, services, and platforms designed to operate through BCIs. It's an uncharted economic frontier that's ripe for innovation. The more you look, the more you realize that BCIs have the potential to fundamentally reshape human civilization. It's an unprecedented blend of science, ethics, philosophy, and even spirituality as we explore the very essence of human consciousness and capability. The potential for brain control or manipulation is definitely a hot topic. You're touching on some of the most critical ethical and safety concerns surrounding BCIs. For starters, let's consider the concept of brain hacking. Just like any other technology connected to the internet, BCIs could potentially be vulnerable to cyber attacks. The consequences could range from unauthorized access to your thoughts and memories, all the way to malicious manipulation of your neural functions. That's a security risk on a level we've never faced before. Then there's the concern of long-term health impacts. While a lot of BCIs aim to be minimally invasive, the truth is that we still don't fully understand the potential side effects of interacting with the brain on such a direct level. Issues like neural fatigue, cognitive overload, or even the risk of physical damage to the brain are not yet fully understood. Another aspect is psychological well-being. How does the use of BCIs affect one's sense of self or perception of reality? Could BCIs exacerbate or even cause mental health issues? And then there's the concept of neural addiction, where the user becomes overly dependent on the interface for cognitive or emotional functions, similar to substance dependency. The notion of thought surveillance is also concerning. If an entity could monitor your thoughts, what does that mean for individual privacy and freedom? This would be a legal and ethical minefield that society would need to navigate carefully. In terms of brain control, there's also the slippery slope towards a dystopian future where BCIs could be used to control or manipulate populations. Whether by governmental organizations or other entities, the abuse potential is a real concern that needs to be addressed proactively. This is why regulations and ethical frameworks are as important as the technology itself. As BCIs advance, there will be an increasing need for guidelines that safeguard individual rights and well-being. So yes, while BCIs offer groundbreaking opportunities, they also come with a set of risks and ethical quandaries that are just as unprecedented. It's a balance that society will have to strike as we continue to delve into this new frontier. It's been a fascinating journey exploring the world of brain-computer interfaces with you. From the awe-inspiring potential to the, to the complex ethical concerns, BCIs truly represent a frontier that could reshape the human experience in ways we're just beginning to understand. Thank you for allowing me to share this captivating subject with you.